the tax revenue will be low. So instead of this approach, I will recommend that let's review the number of taxes that we have currently. And we introduce only taxes that have wide tax base, look at the tax rates so that people can conveniently pay taxes. So does that suggest that if they review all of those, perhaps remove all of those multiple or double taxation and have a high, a higher tax, you think people will conveniently pay? No, you, you don't um, issue a high tax rate. I, I, I think that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we've, there, was, there was a study in uh, 2012 that was done. I was part of a study um, and that study was commissioned by African Development Bank. And that study, um, the report says that there are certain taxes that we should introduce, eliminate some, and we will increase our tax revenue ratio to GDP to 25%. Mm. So now, I don't think that that document was discussed. And I'm, uh, our, at, our, at the federal level? Yes, at the federal that? level. And uh, that, that program, um, we had Minister of Finance in that program when all those things were discussed. But I, I, I don't think um, that document has been uh, looked, or has been considered. So what I'm saying is that instead of creating um, distraction, distortion, and tension, Let's look at the current tax laws we have. Let's amend those tax laws. If you can give nine months grace, yeah. why not use that nine months to address the current tax law? We are talking about asset here. Now, section 33 of the Common Income Tax talks about minimum tax. Now, strictly applying that provision or that section, what that means is that you are discouraging economic growth, industrial development, development because with this, with this that, yeah, that, that with section, the scheme, you mean. yeah, if that law is still in force, is still in the place, minimum tax. yes, the minimum tax. Now, what that provision recommends is that you tax a company using four parameters and usually the highest will be the net asset so what that means is that if you borrow money you learn uh, borrow money from the bank and you are setting up industries what that means is that you are acquiring assets eventually you will be paying taxes on those assets and by extension, what that means is that you are also paying money on borrowed funds. So that will not encourage yeah. how, how does economic that, how, development. If we have yeah. to look at um, uh, assets, and she did, uh, the minister did talk about um, uh, people who own houses outside of Nigeria and trying to see that they catch them in this net. If we have to look at that scenario as against people who own properties at home as well, does is Nigeria ripe to begin to look at property tax to support this initiative? Now, um, currently we don't have property tax in Nigeria. So um, what you can get is income generated from those properties. Now, if I'm using my property outside the country for residential purpose and I'm not earning income. What that means is that I'm not supposed to be paying tax on it. So that brings us to looking at the drawbacks in this policy because if you say yes I have a house in somewhere ex, uh, uh, outside the country, yes am I using it to generate income or not? What about when the funds with which you buy or purchase the asset is taxed. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's become a, a legal process, uh, uh, legal that, yeah, before buying those assets, you actually pay tax on your earnings and 
your profit yeah. now is what you Should we make a specific example saying that, for instance, you're earning one million naira in Nigeria, 